Welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast, everyone. This is episode 237. Beer, boobs, and butts, baseball, body slams, America. That's what we gave the world. All of those things. We invented all of those things. Yeah, uh, probably all 247 too. years of absolute perfection and excellence. Who's your favorite president other than Donald Trump? Go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the fourth. This is the Fourth of July special. Really, I mean, we didn't talk about that. It's not really the Fourth of July special, but every episode is a Fourth of July special. It would have been amazing had we aligned two forty-seven. Had we had ten, oh, 10 more wouldn't recordings. that have been great? Yeah. Damn. And the opportunity. Eventually we will. Yeah. And when we get there, I hope one of us remembers that that's as many years as America is old. Because it will happen during the 40, 247th year of America's It will. We'll have to have those noisemakers and streamers. Do you everything. all feel like we're independent still? Independent. We uh, still indep- celebrate? Have the alien, did the aliens really win and we're just in a simulation? A simulation. Um, the only thing we're not independent is independent thought. We always get our thoughts from elsewhere. We do. We so, do, except me. I'm very independent. Although I do get all of my thoughts from Elon Musk. See, then, <laughs> then you're not independent. That's hilarious. Uh, so yeah, welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast. Uh, just another just hot summer day, 82 degrees I was driving here. Yeah, it was, it's just all the humidity in the world. Yep. I mean, the sun is exploding in our faces as we speak. Um, also, it rained over the weekend in Ohio. So if you're not familiar with Midwest weather, um, particularly this like middle Midwest, um, boy, does it get swampy. Yeah, the continentality. That's why I always tell people. People are like, oh, you know, in Arizona, they're like, oh, it's a dry heat. Mm-hmm. Well, one, I don't want to like open open an oven and stick my head in. Right, yeah. But two, like the oppressive humidity. And it, again, everyone's going to have... Oppressive humidity. I yeah, love that. Every, everyone's going to have their own thing, but... Uh, it's it's not to the point like when I was in Africa where you know, our dehumidifier was taking out three gallons of water mm-hmm. in a twenty four hour period, but it's still it's rather uncomfortable when you go from highly conditioned air into yeah. like just. We're <laughs> definitely in a hosed hose dehumidifier area. Yeah. Don't try to fill the bucket. I wonder where do people dehumidify where the bucket inside the dehumidifier is enough. You like know. like self emptying almost. Like where, well, you know how they all come with like a bucket inside. Yeah, it doesn't self empty. We are in a self emptying where you have to put the hose on the back. Yeah, but there is the bucket, the potential for the bucket. But who the fuck lives in a zone that has that and needs that? I feel like if you live in a dry zone, you don't need to dehumidify. You need to humidify. If you live in, I guess Nebraska or something, maybe. I grew up with wood heat. So, I mean, everyone was always suffering from nosebleeds and everything mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, that got, that got pretty chronic. But, yeah. you know, then you would have other people that would put like a tea kettle or something like on those old steam heaters or whatever yeah. just to, you know, put a little bit of moisture in the air. Yeah. I, I remember seeing that growing up. Yeah, I'm, I don't remember where, but I, someone had a humidifier. Maybe it was my... Maybe it's when we got sick. I don't know. My we mom t- will tell we, us. We totally did. Yeah, she'll try. But why? I mean, it was so fucking. It was those little plastic humid. containers, and then it had like the spinner on it. Yeah. Remember the uh-huh, spinner? The spinner. Yep. These are old school. These are nope. '80s humidifiers. That that's like where now you, you can get like a Vicks one that makes you feel all good. Like our girls used them. They should put like psychedelics in one, and you just walk into a room. It changes the, everything. The problem with those Vicks ones is like if you have any sort of. Uh, uh, sediment or whatever in your water, like it's just gonna start like clogging mm. that crap up, mm. and it just like calcifies. Yeah, that's true. It's the worst. Well, we didn't have well water when I was growing up, not until I was an adult and bought my first house. No, yeah, it wasn't even my first. You're one. like back to the future. Exactly. Much much iron. What one thing I wanted to talk about let's beer re- beer related. Yeah, let's get back on beer. Um, and I experienced this. Uh, we had a black week last week. J- JT came in and dr- drank uh, the Excelsior, right? Yeah, yeah, the Excelsior. Excelsior uh, spilled it. So, so yeah, so check that out. It was four minutes of JT talking about spilling the beer, and he goes, "I, was I should really have had paper towel." That it was going to drip off of the bar. Always have paper towels ready. Yeah, I, I usually have paper towels, but. Um, I don't remember what I was doing. I took the paper towels out. You know what the bonus of epoxy is? Then you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Even, but then it fell know. on the floor, and that's not epoxy. <laughs> um, so uh, the bleach backlash. Beach. Bleach. Bush light peach. 
So uh, when I was on vacation, I was on you know Facebook uh, quite a bit more often than I normally am, and I like uh, Bush Light's team. Their social media mm-hmm. team is second to none. Yeah, they are getting roasted. Yeah, like roasted. if you look at the comments, like I never looked at the Blapple comments or whatever because everyone was enjoying. We're it we're enjoy, great. we're both enjoying Blapple's Still today. Have one. Yes, thank you. Um, but with Bleach. Everyone like, oh, it's a bad day to be a bush light or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like everyone is like, it's it's bad day when you made a terrible beer. Mm-hmm. Like there was more negative comments, and granted, maybe ninety percent of the community likes it. But everyone that I talked to that had the opportunity, no one has said that the bleach is better than the black. No one. Not it's not. not. It's not hyperbole. Like we exaggerate a lot on this podcast. That is not an exaggeration. Why, no one is. Why ruin a good thing? They, I, I just don't get it. They had a license to print money. Yeah. So so now, you know, like I, I made the uh, joke, I have 26 cans of bleach because we drank two on the pod. Mm-hmm. I used two for brats, and I don't know mm-hmm. when they're ever going to go. Mm, that's a good idea. Uh, the the wife didn't like the brats cooked no. in. Uh, She's like, maybe uh, that's why they tasted mm-hmm. funny. Yeah, maybe. So it, but are you seeing the same thing? Like, and yeah, I'm you know, seeing the same thing. Our, our circle of friends is like a Venn diagram. Yeah. Uh, with a little bit of overlap, but anyone that like you've talked to, no one goes, man, that bleach is delicious. Most of the people that I know that aren't in our both of our circle, yeah, they w- won't try it. They're not even trying it. It's it it, would, it took me to give them the black hole for them to try. Most of those people to try it, and then, um, yeah, they're like, oh, I associate JT with flavored Bush Light now, but <laughs> like only Apple. But now, now the peach is out. No, they won't even try it. And now the thing is, because our phones aren't listening to us, I'm gonna get so many advertisements for the fucking peach truck. Oh yeah, so the, many. the pe- oh, like the, the I, I don't truck. like peaches. I, don't, I like peaches. I, I don't like give give my peaches to JT. Yeah, like, give me his peaches. If if you ever go to a restaurant and like alter your order, I'm like always you know somebody will be like uh you know no spice or whatever. I did that a lot with Bloody Marys the mm. last week. I'm like give me their spice. Mm, give it all. Then. I don't want a bloody Mary. At they, all. they can they can have the olives or the other accoutrement that are are terrible adjuncts. That's adjuncts. An, an interesting. There's an give interesting me their spice. dynamic here is that I like almost everything that has tomatoes in it, and you don't. Except I hate bloody Marys. Yep. and you like them. My my mother in law came to like, you know, she was making fun of me for not liking tomatoes or whatever, and she's like, oh, there's tomatoes in it or whatever, but you won't eat it. I mean, like I eat salsa. It's just a mm-hmm. raw tomato. Mm. in that form like i love tomato soup obviously i love pasta yeah i don't like ketchup right. you know that's, like a, ketchup. That, that, that's a different conversation but yeah um so i feel it, like that's more um psychological than flavor it's, yeah i mean it's all right you don't want it because it doesn't belong yeah like i won't gag if i have ketchup right i will gag if i have a tomato mm, i love tomatoes it's and I appreciate what they do, you know, for society. I just Italians love them. Italians love them. God, and love the them. weird thing is, you know, they didn't grow them there until they discovered the new world. I didn't know that. Yeah, tomatoes weren't a thing. So we anyway. invented spaghetti too, then. No sauce, spaghetti sauce. Mm-hmm. You know, like they had pasta. Well, I mean, come on, who's eating spaghetti without spaghetti sauce? I I don't know. I. I'm not a uh, world Old Italian. Christopher Columbus, maybe? Christopher. Until well, he discovered Chris, America. Christopher Columbus was a Spaniard. No, he wasn't. He was Italian. He was Italian. Funded by the Spanish. Funded by the Spanish because the Italians were like, you're crazy, dude. You're, you're great. Here. You're crazy. That's another good one I should put on there. Oh, you're, yeah. You're, you're crazy, crazy, man. You're crazy. <laughs> Half baked. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, old school. Old school. Great movie. Also, great movie. America also gave us that. Um, so, yeah, Peach. Uh, not not as popular. And you'd think that, that Anheuser-Busch needs to win. They need, that, yeah. Regardless, again, of what your opinions are of the controversy, it has cost them money. Well, well, the, the, Blapple, the Blapple bleach thing, that was, you know... Yeah, that bring, was bring pretty, it back. They bring decided it back Because that. it's going to be a license to print money. Because yeah, yeah. Obviously, Peach was probably decided, you know, quarter three of last Why year or whatever. Why would they do that? It was, because we the announcement was made. You had made you had read the announcement or whatever. Yeah. Um a long time ago. I, I and I think Stev was Stev Stev I think tipped my hand to it. Yeah. And said that the the word on the street, the the dizzy was that it was gonna be. I just can't peach. imagine that they tasted it and were like people are gonna line up for this. Yeah, the next year is gonna be like kumquat or something. Just they're they just have to go. change it. It can't be it can't stay this two years in a row. No. I mean, because then we're gonna lose faith. And we're not going to want flavored Bush Light anymore. You got to do something else. Yeah, change it. Uh, 
Bleach is a, a, a loser. It's a loser. Uh, other beer news. My brewery box came. Mm-hmm. So, fun story. Um... I was going on vacation. I knew I was leaving at a certain time, and that's when the delivery was supposed to get here was that day. But we were leaving before, and it was coming via FedEx, so it had to be signature service. And uh, so I, or sorry, UPS, because I made a UPS account to be able to alter my delivery. Oh. And I spent an hour and a half doing that because when I made my order, I used Matthew instead of Matt, and they said, Mm -hmm. we don't have a delivery with that name. Mm. And I was like, okay, they didn't put it. And they're like, for all future deliveries, now you're good to go. But I like did it online, and then I had to call the help. And then they said it wasn't a technical issue. It was a, so That's I got bounced around. Interesting. It was a it was a cacophony of bullshit. So then they said, in this case, I had to contact the shipper, and the shipper was going to have to put a hold on it. Mm. And I go, why is that? And because they said that there hadn't been a failed delivery yet. Once there's a failed delivery, the receiver takes over responsibility. Until there mm-hmm. isn't, it's on the shipper. It's on them. So then I contacted the shipper, uh, brewery, and they never got back to me. Mm-hmm. So um, lo and behold, so then I'm kind of freaking out. Um, you know, Once, once it yeah, failed totally. or whatever, I could log in and see that it came to my address. It came a day early. Mm-hmm. Like an hour before we were going to leave the house. Wow. I had just gotten done with a, a work video call. And 15 seconds later, I got a ring doorbell notification. I go, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And it was the guy. I was like, you just made my day. You made, and, made his day. This whole weekend. So then I got to sign it, got to put it away. Otherwise, it would have been like eight days till I was back home again and wouldn't have been able to see it. So it was awesome. I just took it out, admired it real quick, took a picture, sent it to a few people, and then packed up and then headed out. Mm. So so anyways, a bunch of good stuff. The, uh, the interesting thing, though was uh, the swag that came with. So it came with a nice wine opener slash church key and a couple of uh, low ball glasses, which were really nice. Uh, The Reserve Society, which is a good deal if you live in California because then you can go into their exclusive room Mm. that they have at the brewery. brewery. Um, But outside of that, it was nice too because I didn't have the pressure of having to pick the beers. They just 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 picked them for me based on my flavor profile. That is a lot of pressure. Because there's, yeah, there's, so, there's, so, there's so much stuff. And now I get constant emails about ordering more, which I probably mm-hmm. will. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just freaked out again. It worked out. Um, I you know I don't know. I probably used up all my good karma for the rest of the year on that one, but I'm glad that it came. It's weird because you can get the address somewhat wrong. <clears throat> there must be a policy of UPS for the name thing. It's the name thing. Because you can get the Different. street spelled wrong. You can get the road, drive, Difference boulevard Difference between Matt thing, and Matthew. But Matt and Matthew will keep it. That's crazy. Yep. So, uh, but here going forward, I have an alias in my account. Mm-hmm. So, e- if it's either sent to Matt or Matthew, I can Oh, answer. okay, good. Yeah. So, um, but then, uh, outside of that, uh, I bequeathed. Can we talk about the the, the, the big Let's because this one that it's JT's birthday is coming up. It's coming up. So I decided, and I was having him look at the beers, and he made a comment about the one that, and that was the one I put your card on that I picked out for you, and was the one that he kind of picked out for himself. It was awesome. So Thank he you will so much. he will have that white chocolate strawberry because if you know JT, he's uh, it, it, desserts first, and then desserts some fruits. first, and then dessert, and then dessert <laughs> followed up by dessert. That's right. But that's all that that's all I really had. Just uh, you know, vacation. I didn't come back with a plethora of beer because I bought it all before I left. But mm-hmm. Yeah, I um I recently Lots of seltzers. recently went to uh, Louisville and uh, didn't buy any bring back beer because you know, really Louisville is just an extension of Cincinnati, which did you I didn't get, realize. Did you get a hot brown? I did get a hot brown. Is it from the Brown Hotel? No, no. Oh. I, the Brown Hotel, I can't remember. We tried. Um, and that's near the Louisville Slugger Factory. It um, is. The traditional one. Yeah. Yeah. I think I believe you need to call ahead to get seats. It's like reservations, but maybe not. Just really? Just like get on the list. I can't remember what Katie said. Um, I, 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 well, maybe, maybe during a busy time. Like, yeah, we maybe. walked right in. Oh, okay. Maybe not then. And it's really... It, it's an experience, and it's it? the world's hottest food. It's right up there with pizza rolls. Hot browns are right there. Just yeah, get it, let it sit at the table, have a nice, engaging conversation. Yeah, it was, leave it alone. Forget that it's there. Leave it alone. Just leave it alone. It will melt your like I. 
I because it's hot. burnt the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. did that. I did wait until it got cool enough to eat. Um, but that's that's the number one thing. Or did you go to Guy Fieri's restaurant there? I forget. No. Is that Fourth Street? I forget. What yeah, Fourth Street has like I think Fourth or Sixth Street has covered. all of the stuff. Yeah. Um, we didn't go there. But the Brown Hotel, if you're ever in Louisville, uh, must do. Yeah. Um, so Same we went a couple doors down from the Brown Hotel um, to another place, and and we had uh, some craft beer and uh, hot brown. Did you go to the brewery at Kitty Corner across yeah, the street? I think it's the brewery. Yeah. Um. Gosh, I forget. I'll I'll, I'll pull it up later when when. Uh, when we're talking, there's a lag. Bloviating. Yeah, bloviating. Um, but yeah, I went to Louisville. Didn't bring any beer back because really it was like all Rheingeist. Yeah. It was, so I didn't realize that it was going to be that much of an extension of um, Cincinnati. But I did bring some beer back from Florida, which is what we're going to have today. That's awesome. And mm -hmm. that's a fucking segue if there is one. That is a segue if there ever was one. And uh, so I went to Florida for a tournament. And uh, baseball, not mine, my son's. I just had to chaperone that. So we have here Bold City out of Jacksonville, Florida. Two beers from the same brewery, Bold City. Uh, first one is just going to be their standard IPA. And this is a Florida-style IPA, which I find interesting because we're trying to coin Ohio-style. Um, and, you know, uh, every bar I went to had... Uh, as their craft beer on tap was either Cigar City, yep, High Lie, or uh, nothing. There was another another pineapple uh, IPA that that seemed like everyone pretty much had, um, but mostly no bars there just serving. Well, it was West Palm Beach, so that probably says what it needs to say. Yeah, because that's a more upscale area. Most people aren't drinking beer. They're drinking cocktails. Mojitos. Mojitos, bourbon, stuff like that. We were at a supper club. My, uh, We went to a, a like the one of these supper clubs in Wisconsin, and uh, my father-in-law ordered a mojito and said it was delightful. Oh, that's in a supper yeah, club. Right? That seems like yeah. a weird supper club thing. Uh, we, I'll give you a, a kind of a tip-off as to what West Palm Beach was like. The sports bars that we had selected to go to, yeah. so a lot of the parents... We're like, let's go out. Let's get some drinks. They were playing tennis on the TVs. So that's West Palm Beach. Oh. So we had to ask them to put baseball on. What the fuck? Isn't that crazy? Well, again, so uh, what? My um, my geography. Oh, that's kind of primed. My geography of Florida. How far is it from Tampa Bay? I don't know where Tampa Bay is, but it's about 45 minutes north of Miami. Oh, so it's the other side of the state. Yeah, okay, so side, yeah. like they can't even support their baseball teams down there. So I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't care about about that at all. And when we when they when we did ask them to put the baseball on, they put on this channel that was like all the scores, just listed. Like CBS, like the CBS Sports yeah, Line, whatever. Yeah, it was weird. So they were like, nah. maybe they don't pay cable. Maybe maybe they don't have cable. Maybe. No, they have cable because how are you going to get tennis? I mean that 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 could be one like of those tennis networks or throw something. freeway channels or whatever that's Maybe. like on Freeview or Freebie or something like that. Maybe there's a lot of those quality at like no, TV, this was a, this was a high end bar. They, they had they had cable. It was a sports bar. They it, were advertising sports. It was like Rich Mahogany. Yeah, it was Ooh. it was weird. It, it, You're saying high end bar too? That reminds me. Okay. But yeah, so how what time of day was it? Um, it was pre-dinner, three-ish. Okay. Three-ish, yeah. We had, I think we had a game that morning. We lost. Maybe not a lot of games on. Maybe, you know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that was it. Maybe not a lot of games on. You, let's crack this thing open. Ready? Yep. I'm not. It's not primed. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. You open away from you? No, I, it wasn't primed. I had to use my thumb. I don't have a, a index finger now, but I have a little bit on my thumb. Oh, so I needed to use that. I did get the uh, instant aroma of IPA. I, yeah. I wonder what Florida style is. It, well, we're about to find out. Gimmick? You think gimmick? Gimmick for sure. Okay, East Coast, West Coast. Uh, in this Florida style IPA, we get the best of both. That's what they see with hoppiness up front. Do you want me to read this? Or do you want to try to no, 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 be fine. yourself? I'm wondering, like, Florida style immediately, what I would go with is grapefruit. Yeah. Grapefruit's Florida, grapefruit. right? Oh, yeah. The, like the Grapefruit League. Yeah, is the is the Florida spring spring training? Are you sure Florida's not the cactus league? 
Um, it could be if they want. All the cats. they could do whatever they, they the can identify high? as whatever league they want. With hoppiness up front, giving way to citrus notes throughout, and in a pleasantly crisp floral finish that will make you think that's my style. Hashtag be bold. Because Bold City. Bold. Now, I went to Bold City's website. Underwhelmed. And kudos to them. I was underwhelmed. And kudos to them for being underwhelming and not inundating me with about me stuff. I did look for the about me. I didn't find it. Which means I don't think it's there. They're just like, we're a brewery. We sell beer. Come in, buy it. Way to be basically. bold. Way to be bold. Be bold. Just come in, buy our fucking beer. Uh, oh, yeah, was That's it. <laughs> Sorry, Stacey. So, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, I have some issues with the can art, but um, we'll, we'll go over that. We'll go over that when we get there. Um, so, that's it. Florida style IPA. I don't know. Is that, a, you think that's an official no. style? Uh, no, but, um, you know, you come here for just uh, conjecture and hypothesis. Hypotheses. Yeah, hypotheses and... and um, um, Conjecture, conjecture, and and more, and uh, somewhat half baked assessments. Um, I will say a rich, uh, uh, and this is the, this is the nice thing. We're opposites when it comes to IPAs, uh, um, which is a good thing because you don't want to be in agreement. You don't want to have just a um, an echo chamber. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, there's no entertainment in that entertainment value in that. Right. That's, that's one true. thing I want to say though. Our solo episodes pale in comparison. Like there. Our community ones, uh, obviously, when we have Stev, we get the Stev bump, mm-hmm. are so much the bigger. Stev bump. Like, I'm oh, wondering yeah. if people, like, there's like eight oh, people just, who watch It's just a solo episode. Yeah, fuck that. I'm not watching that shit. Yeah. I'm not watching that. But, guy you know, th- those that numbers thing. are going up. So, I, uh, again, the, it's the animal magnetism mm-hmm. be- betwixt us. It is. Um, it's necessary. It is. It is necessary. Okay. So, back to this. This is what. Reading it, I think, influenced me. I'm so glad that you ah, did it. No, no, no. It's I'm, fine. It sucks. Because I get everything that they say. But it could be um, because I'm weak of mind and spirit. It could be a suggestion. I don't get like the uh, cloudiness or uh, con- convolution, all the floating, everything that is typical in the Niepa. Um, I do get the hop, the forward hop. You know, that's mm. the first thing that comes out. Uh, those uh, acrid and those alpha notes in the beginning part of it. The floral stuff, uh, I, I guess I hear it if it was suggested. If you know, if we rewind, yeah, rrr, yeah. Rrr, I wouldn't have probably said that. Sure. I'm gonna um, give myself no credit on that. Um, I dig this. I don't think Florida style is a real thing. Off the top rope, I could see where this would be a daily drinker as a departure mm-hmm. from a whip. Like if I'm gonna have an IPA as a departure from a multi note because I've been drinking a lot of. Um, uh, lighthearted or mm-hmm. half-hearted. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a one-note IPA. You know what you're getting. This is uh, much much more complex. It's got layers to it. Um, I like that. It's intriguing. So off the top rope, I'll stop beating around the bush. Four two five. Very good score. I, 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 if Florida style is a real thing. <laughs> That's going to be your music, the Canner Boner segment. Oh, dang. I'm, I'm sorry to force you to play it so abruptly. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so this is the Canner Boner segment brought to you by, is it... Well, Stev gave us some beer, but we didn't have it on the pod. We haven't yet. Um, and then uh, Chuggalo Todd, was he the last? Hmm. Shoot. That would I don't know. Time. Well, let's just call it... Let's go with Steph. Let's, let's go with Steph. Uh, this is Cameron Barnes, uh, brought to you by Chola Steph. Thanks, Steph. So if if you noticed that uh, when I when I uh, went up and showed the there is a skeleton in a in some board shorts who's surfing. Um, I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with the coasts, but I have uh, not seen a lot of surfers in Florida. In fact, I don't think if you're surfing in Florida, you're probably just uh, boogie boarding or body surfing, uh, I think is what it's called, because the the waves don't get like what what they're showing here on this can. This is Hawaii slash oh, okay. California. I like that. There's like probably some like six footers. Wake the little wakes, not six feet. Maybe probably is twice as high as the tallest wave I've ever seen in okay. Florida. Um, 
Florida's uh, Florida's water is uh, far more approachable. It's warmer. <laughs> it's far and it's um, less violent. In Hawaii, I got just flipped around and I got water in my ear, got infected. It was like crazy. I just, I was like assaulted by the ocean. I, sp I spent, so you're saying I spent time um, last week in a wave pool that had three foot waves. That's yeah, Florida? That's basically Florida. Like the, at its peak. Unless there's a hurricane, of course. Yeah. If there's a hurricane, yeah, you can expect those waves. But who's surfing in a hurricane? Um, ooh, uh, I know, um, you know the, 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 the guy answer. from uh, Point Break, Patrick Swayze's character, okay. remember, off no. the coast of Portugal, that's where, like, the big, like, 70-footers are. Well, that makes sense. Portugal? The Iberian Peninsula. I don't know. D does, watch what, Point is Break, Is it just maybe one. a fact of the matter that water travels more violently in a eastern, easterly direction? When, when yeah, it's so, hitting the East Coast from the West, it's just like so calm and warm and nice. Yeah. Um, like I, we were just floating around in the ocean. Was there was it, no threat to us. The 2004 tsunami that hit Indonesia that mm -hmm. wiped out a bunch of people, that would have been a um, eastward traveling or a westward traveling. Yeah, well, I guess, that's yeah, I guess the one that they hit Japan. Tsunami, tsunami signs, by the way. Are you prepared for a tsunami in L.A. right now? Really? Yeah, all over. Are you prepared for a tsunami? I feel like maybe that's um, foreshadowing. I was going to be like, what? <laughs> like what? tsunami yeah. signs. That could be foreshadowing I, I heard for that some podcast. sort of you know, government conspiracy. Yeah, like are you prepared for a tsunami? What, no. you got a raft out back? Like, no, I'm not prepared I'll, for a tsunami. I'll practice on my treadmill. Let me water. ask this. Has anyone in the history of tsunamis ever been prepared for the tsunami? What? Yeah, just yeah, crazy. Exactly. Um, so, otherwise... This is interesting. The sharks, yes. There's definitely sharks in Florida. The octopus or octopi. Oh, I guess octopi would be plural. Uh, yeah, there's probably those in off the Florida coast. Do you eat uh, octopus? I have not, but I think Andrew has. I think Andrew has. Interesting. We went to, you know, um, Young's Korean over there on yeah. 444? Um, they serve some pretty interesting shit. Yeah. And I think he ordered it there. Interesting. And yeah. you didn't just be like, hey, give me a... I don't, I don't want to do that. A nibble. I'm not, I'm not as adventurous with food. Although I will eat ketchup. Hey, not on its own. What about... I'll so, use it. So this last week uh, at uh, the supper club, we had escargot. Are you an I've had it. I, I don't like it. I've had it. We had it with, Even all the when my kids butter? were doing the quesadilla thing. Yeah. I uh, we made one with escargot, and I had that, and it it was fine. So here's what this is: what people are telling you when they say they like escargot is they they like butter and garlic. It, it's a vehicle to get it's butter a vehicle. and garlic. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Because so. like we sit there because they have escargot plates. You can get them on cruise ships or supper clubs or whatever. Like you want the garlic and butter. Like keep that there. That's such a French thing. Like I've been to a French restaurant where it's like, here's this food that it could. Okay. Well, escargot, this is different. But like they'll take beef, for example, or steak and say, here's this food that's essentially perfect on its own. Yeah. Now we're going to French it up and put some shit on it. And yeah. now it's French and it's even better. But escargot is like, if you, if, if these French, uh, French chefs were so good, they could make escargot taste good as escargot. But what they've done is they've made escargot taste good with butter and garlic. So, I can make anything taste good with butter and garlic pretty much. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I tend to disagree. And after I just recently learned about the Michelin star rating, yeah, like what the fuck that means, that blew my mind. It mm -hmm. it lost so much, like um, just so much of its elegance, I guess, in my mind when I found out it's just marketing. It is. I thought it was like a true award. What's what's true in this world anymore? I'm having a, a existential crisis. It's just a fucking travel guide. <laughs> <laughs> Michelin star. I have Michelin. I could get some Michelin stars at my house. We cook pretty well. Um, but there are alligators. And I don't know how you tell an alligator and a crocodile apart. Alligator's more pointy. Uh, mm. Crocodile's more uh, rounded. But when that shit's chasing you in the water, uh, I'm it not taking matter. the time to find it. It doesn't there. matter. Yeah. The only way I know to call them alligators in Florida is because... Um, the crocodile hunter was Australian, and that's how I know. That's how I know alligators are not Australian. They're from 
Florida. At least that's what I think. Yeah. Um, it's odd we did, Again, conjecture. Conjecture. Yeah. We did conjecture. get to see an alligator when we were there. I took my son to a um, conservatory. Got man, that place was crazy. They had all kinds of animals, and they had an alligator. A lot of turtles, a lot of birds. Uh, and so that's what's on this can. That's the can I've owner segment. This beer, I find this beer to be more New England than West Coast. Did you I, did I you have it. a scale, a leaning towards one side? No, I I I would lean New England a little bit, but uh, again yeah. with that acridness, like it it has like that whippa. It does. It does have a little whippa. To it, so I guess that their description is is valid. I also agree that the floral thing. Um, I've never actually thought a beer tasted floral until this one, and it was only because I read it and was like, "Yep, I would describe this as floral." Um, it really is. It's is. I really can't. I still can't explain it to this day, what floral even means in a flavor, but it's there. Like potpourri, like pop, eating potpourri chips. No, eating potpourri would be just horrible. I again, but didn't you ever do that? Like again, yeah, I, of course. I, I I didn't realize. I thought it was candy. Like I read, it I, looks great. I, it I, smells good. I, I ate eat bullion that. cubes as a kid because I thought it was candy. <laughs> again, I didn't have that shit. So like anytime like it looked edible and it smelled mm-hmm. pleasant, I was like, I'm gonna eat that. Yep. Bullion cubes and fucking potpourri chips. I'm gonna eat that. And it dries your mouth out for the, all of it. To, it's like having deodorant in your mouth. Mm. We had got in a deodorant fight during swim practice, after swim practice one time. Oh, wow. Deodor, there's no amount of water that can get that. Like you just. Like you and your friends or yeah, you like and we were, parents of your no, daughters? No, no, no. no me, <laughs> my, <laughs> me and my friends, it was seventh grade, okay, the swim okay. team. And we were chasing each other with deodorant sticks. Mm. And the goal was to get it into the other. And like it. The, it is an antiperspirant for mm, sure. I bet. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Oh, fuck, I forgot what it was going to say. I wouldn't do that. That's right. Um, I, I also think yeah. this is seventh a really grade. good beer. I wouldn't do a lot of shit that I did in seventh grade. Yeah. Did, I think towel snapping's banned now. But we, we used to snap towels. There was an art to folding that towel together. Oh, hell yeah. You yeah. just, man, you get that thing just the perfect amount of wetness. Not too wet, not too dry. Twist it up. Again, that noise is because it's breaking the sound barrier. That's why it is? Yeah, that's because it's moving so fast. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that, that's what, it kills people. It can kill people. It'll kill you. It, it could rip your sack right open. Yeah. In fact, that's the rumors that I'm pretty sure every locker room had. Was that, oh, man, did you hear, like, the, the senior year four years ago, yeah. someone's sack got ripped open by a towel snap. Right. Every high school, same story. Yeah, stop that. Uh, it's not a real Stop story. that, Timmy. I don't think that happened. No. Who's running around their locker rooms naked at, like, the puberty age? I did know a kid that slid down a flagpole and caught a sack and lost a lost a ball. He lost a nut. Damn. On the, uh... uh did did it stick po- to the pole? I... You or know, did he I, lose I, it I, from, like, burn? Like no, no. Cold he, burn. He, uh... It, it came out. It, um, what, is, what is the thing that you tie the flag on? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The little elbow thing. Yeah, the elbow, the elbow thing. But, yeah, he... <laughs> That seems like that, that yoink on that the one. Num- the amount of pain that boy that would be rough. Yeah. Now they do say that if you were to carry out testicular pain from beginning hit there, if you were to carry that out through the the, the lifetime of a of a live birth, <laughs> sorry, Stacy, that it would it would exceed the pain of of giving birth. Yeah, we both have wives with kids. Yeah. Neither of which we listen anymore, so we can, uh, um, I'm not going to take that fight. Um, yeah, I'll take that fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, With it, no I'm consequences. Sure the amount of, like, just, I don't know, the, the... I'd rather be kicked in the balls again than have another The kid. number of things that happen from childbirth, like, just to you, to the human body, obviously is much greater than what happens when you get kicked in the nuts. You fall over, you're writhing in pain for a while, and then you go about your life. Yeah. You know, you just, you don't have like a the lifetime of, of remembrance. <laughs> yeah. 18 years of bank account pain. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, I like this beer. I think it's very good. And I, I, I could see it being a daily drinker as well. Uh, am 
I at the same score? No, I don't think so. I think I'm at a 4-0. I know I'm at a 4-0, actually. Um, yep, 4-0. That's what it is. And I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's just where I'm at. So while, while you get the second beer, the one thing that I was reminded of, um, you know, talking about bars and whatnot, uh, you were talking about your tennis bar that you love. Tennis uh, bar. We, every year that we go to the Dells, we always go to this piano bar. And they always have, uh, piano bars are great. I'm now discovering them later in life. I wish I would have discovered them earlier. Uh, there, it, there's multiple signs there that say no kids after 10 o'clock, which is very generous. 10 o'clock is yeah, very generous. Is even, generous. Even for Wisconsin, a state, of, uh, a state of drunks. You're in a state of intoxication. At some point, whether you're recovering or uh, on a, uh, you know, you're blowing, blowing a point three two or something like that. Mm -hmm. There was multiple kids in this piano bar, and, like, we're trying to request songs. So last year, I, I don't want to put them on blast because it was uh, hilarious, and there's another story there. Um, the Last year, the lady would go. She was, like, 9.55. She's like, all right, five minutes. The kid's got to go. So mm -hmm. she can add her own dirty to yeah yeah this the the girl this year beauty queen like uh you know she was miss massachusetts wow you guys can google it uh she went to harvard all of this stuff and like we're requesting songs and it's all like venmo cash app stuff and so like i'm putting down some real coin or whatever and so i got a couple of songs played the people we were with they weren't playing any of their stuff and they're still doing money mm -hmm. and then me needless she's playing like taylor swift or whatever for the she's like playing to the eight-year-old that's still mm. in the fucking crowd it's a bar and i just you know they they could hear me cuss i go it's 10 15 in a fucking bar get, mm -hmm. get get your kids out of here it's my psa always always should be nine o'clock but 10 o'clock i'm fine with yeah, I don't know. The Tell one mom was like, smashed, too. Like, her kid shouldn't have been there, but... Yeah, well, so, you know... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've seen some weird parenting things happening lately. Uh, especially in Florida. Holy crap. I don't know. Um, but I won't get into that. Why not? This is the place. Yeah, not not it, related? Uh, I don't think it's related to beer. Okay. This yeah, was... No, this was more baseball. This was more drinking. Yeah. I didn't I order a Bush Light. That was my last drink of the night, though. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't uh, I haven't done a, a like a bar night in a while. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, we had our babysitter come from an hour and a half away, so like wow. we could yeah, so we could go my in laws and my wife's best friend and her husband. Like your babysitter here? No, nope, our babysitter in Wisconsin okay. drove it, drove an hour and a half. So you have like a designated babysitter out there? Um, well, it was the um, niece of her best friend, but it was mm. like yeah, I'll drive an hour and a half. To watch the kids. To watch some kids. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going, if I'm in another state and I'm going out, I'm not bringing the kids like that. Right. Uh, but I usually plan. My kids, they're they're a little older than your kids, so we plan a lot of things around them. We're not going to go to a bar at night. Well, they, they they had the whole you know water park everything. They had all of. You oh, know, they had a good day. Oh my god, okay. they had a good three that's days. Good. Okay. Just okay. Like, so it's your turn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Where's the that. booze percentage on this? Why are you hiding it from me? Uh, this one, I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Um, the other one was 7% if I didn't say it. But yeah, this is I got that one. Bolt City Brewing Killer Whale Cream Ale, which I think rhyming, you can't go wrong with that. That's amazing. Looking forward to this cream ale. Uh, the, the cream ale that, as everyone knows, that I'm really fond of is from the other coast, from California. 4% on this one. This guy. one's good. Oh, 4% is not bad. Um, that'll, that'll, that's a good, good pairing. A seven and a four. Give you a nice, even 11. So killer whale cream ale. Um, wow. They've been making this for a long I'm time. I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm not even going to read that thing this time. We'll read it later. You want to crack this open and start getting drinking? Yep. All right. Three, two, one. I Perfect just, crack. I just, I went to untap to check the Ooh, ABV. It smells really good. ABV on this. And the other people that have had this in my friend group, the last one most recently had it in 2015. Okay. That's the one thing I wanted to say, actually. Um, so all that beer that I bought, obviously there was going to be some stuff because he'd been mm -hmm. stocking up for years. Mm -hmm. The the Lord Hobo Glorious, which Lord Hobo we know for, um, uh, help me out, Boom Sauce. Oh, that, okay. That's yeah, their yeah, flagship, yeah. That, uh, Niepa. So I picked up some Glorious as a fridge filler, as we found out a couple of weeks ago. 
So I opened a can of it and it blew up. Oh, dang. So I was like, oh, son of a gun. So I opened another can and it blew up. So then I actually was tasting it a little bit. It was off. So I contacted Steve Beer, uh, Chuggalo Steve Beer, and I was like, hey, I think these ones are off. And he took the other 18 cans that he had and he dumped them all and he sent me a picture of it. He oh, goes, wow. thanks for the heads up. Thanks. It was all, and he goes, gone now. he goes, sw- swing by the house and he goes, I'll replace it and I uh, will give you something more for your time. I was like, no, that's not, no. I, I just, I, I felt bad. Like, and he told me, let me know so I don't try to sell this to other people. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, well, that's really nice. Right. And what like, a nice guy. Again, like, out of all the beers that I've had, and ironically, small world that JT gifted me a four pack. And last week after the cameras went mm-hmm. off, I gifted him the same four pack. Yeah. And the only reason I knew about it was when I checked it in later. Mm. It was like, hey, I go, this beer is delicious. Thanks for the beer, JT. Wow. I had no idea. And that was 2021. Wow. We were so young back then. Um, yeah. I, I marked the time by the podcast now. I was watching a video earlier, which you'd appreciate, about uh, The Undertaker and... Uh, his uh the roman reigns match where he you know left his hat in the ring was 2017 yeah and i was like that was pre bcp a long time ago yeah because we started 2018 yeah so i you know i gotta mark the time by that like this this just different i'm a different person after 2018 got a whole identity now yeah, First you're before, a pu- you're a public a public figure. About. Exactly, I was just a guy moving about the world with no purpose. Now my purpose is <clears throat> Monday beer. <clears throat> I feel like these are filling. It could be. Yeah, the- I feel like they're filling too. Like I, I I actually did have a thought where I was like, I'm gonna drink this whole thing, but it's gonna be rough, and not because of the flavor. That because I'm gonna be full. Etiquette when you're when you're at a dinner where when you're having like a nice dinner. I'm less likely, and I want to know where you are on this, I'm less likely to order beer because I feel like at the end of it, so if I have like a four to five ounce, like a nice bourbon or something like that, it's easier to get into my belly than at, I, hmm. a couple of times in the last year where I've been out to eat, like I've been struggling to put down, like I'll do one, maybe two drinks at dinner now. I just, because I want to enjoy the meal. Yeah. I don't want to get like overstuffed. Oh, interesting. interesting. Now, I'm, now, I, now I got a lot of thoughts in my head. This could be, this is a good conversation. This is a, this is a hundred percent a drinking thing because I want to know where the chugglers are at too. But Urban. I won't, I won't order more than one beer. I can't remember the last time I ordered more than one beer with a meal. My favorite drink, period. Besides um, tanks for breakfast. That's different. That's an empty stomach. That's different. My favorite drink to order that's not a beer is a old fashioned with the orange extra muddled. And I think it's the fucking best drink you can get, but I only order it in front of certain people because I just don't feel like, I feel like the people that I go to dinner with are beer people. What's it, what's your alcohol in your old fashioned? Well, I was doing maker's mark, but then this is a great question too, because so this just came up. This just came up. I was doing Maker's Mark because I like Maker's Mark, but uh, a bartender in Florida actually questioned me on it. Yeah, and he's like, you know, the notes of the the notes of the Maker's Mark don't particularly match what you're going for in the old fashioned. And I was like, oh, please explain. So he actually said that the number one uh, alcohol I don't know if it's a bourbon or a whiskey uh, because I'm not that educated on on the topic it he said the number one thing you should put in an old-fashioned is knob creek and so i tried it Mm -hmm. and it is fucking awesome way better than Um, maker's mark i i come from the state of old fashions you come from kentucky um old fashions are not a kentucky drink good um but that was a test you passed the um (laughs) the addendum to that is brandy but brandy. I but I'm okay. not a I'm not okay. a brandy old fashioned person either. I have not had that. Um, so Wisconsin, here's a stat for you. Wisconsin consumes ninety percent of the brandy consumed in the world is well, in Wisconsin. I the other believe it. the other eight percent is France. Uh, oh okay. And then two percent all around the country. I believe that. So anyways, when you get a old fashioned Wisconsin, if you say old fashioned, it's automatically getting made with brand. You have to specify mm, a yeah, bourbon specify old fashioned. Bourbon. Okay. 
So, uh, because I, I ordered a couple old fashions. It's my wife's go-to drink. Um, even, I love it. I think it's the perfect cocktail. Yeah. So, we, I need to get you... Have you had Soul Boxer? It's the pre-mixed stuff? Um, well, I have it's not, no. The, the big jug. But I also did... I was fishing around Arrow, and there was one that's just called Old Fashioned. And it, I looked on the back, and it's Buffalo Trace. After... Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I was like, holy shit! And no one finds. And I got to the counter and I was paying for it. And the guy's like, you know something? No one knows this is here. I was like, oh, that's crazy. He's like, everyone comes in asking for Buffalo Trace, and we don't have it, obviously. Yeah, but yeah, they're but mixed. they have this mixed thing. I most couple. of these people are gonna go home and mix anyway because they're all fucking idiots. I have a couple of mixes, but uh, I'll after the cameras go, I'll show you the soul box okay. or whatever. But uh, but yeah, that's my go-to drink. But as I was saying, at I, dinner, I don't order cocktails. Unless I'm with certain people. So that's interesting. Why? I think um, maybe there's a pretentiousness to a cocktail. And also, like, um, my sister and her husband, for example, I don't think they're cocktail drinkers. Yeah. So we'll... And I like to enjoy the drinks of the the person I'm most associating with. So in, in that case, if I was to go out to dinner with my sister... So you're like a My chameleon. sister and my wife will pair up, and I'll pair up with her husband. And we'll drink beer. Yeah, I guess it's a chameleon thing. But if I go out with you, yeah, I'd feel comfortable ordering a cocktail. But mostly we drink beer because we talk about beer so much every yeah. week. Uh, Randy the places Orton, we go are beer places. That that as well. Yeah, Randy Orton, I'll order cocktails in front of um, and with. And when I go out with my wife alone, I'll order cocktails. But it's rarely, interesting. Any other time do I order cocktails? With other people. It's a quantity thing. It's the whole, like, I love deep crust pizza, but I only have a thin crust stomach now. Mm Mm-hmm. Smart. Now, I did go to Oakwood Club with Randy Orton on, uh, two days ago. Yeah. Boy, they overserved the shit out of me. Really? Those old fashions, yeah. Were you asking for all the bread? I was close. (laughs) I was close. I actually wanted to order food, but I didn't. Oh, you guys just went there for drinks. We just went for drinks, yeah. Have you ever been there just to, to sit at the bar? I've never been to Oakwood Club. The bar... Oh, well, holy shit, you're missing out. The bartenders are... Their their personalities will... They you, sell the place. You have, you have made um, lifelong friends with Cam Tots. Yeah. You would do the same at Oakwood Club. And the, and that's the interesting... You know, again, that's some of the draw. Like, I we will go out of our way just to go visit a bartender. There's a British bartender there yeah. who will... Never, never sugarcoat anything. Oh, yeah. Well, that's and like that Aussie. what you want. Fuck is every other word. Well, I'm not even saying just in language. Like, he will tell C- you you're cunt wrong. Cunt is in vernacular, current vernacular. Yeah. Okay. Common vernacular. So, so, like, this this extra muddled thing, it yeah. came from Mexico. When I was there, they destroy the orange. Like, absolutely pulverize it. Yeah. And I was like, this is how it should be. They macerate it. Yeah. It's just fucked up. And I'm like, this is how it should be. I don't want there to be any orange left on the peel, but put it all in there. Get the peel in there and everything. And so I went to the Oakwood Club uh, with my wife the last time. I said, how do I order this so that they'll absolutely destroy the orange? And she's like, just say extra muddled. And, And she actually asked the British guy. And apparently he said it in some vulgar way, but they do it there anyway. So the interesting thing, like, so talking about cocktails, Randy Orton mm-hmm. and stuff, my mother-in-law ordered a cocktail and it came with a very deep red cherry mm. that she had never had before in her life. I'm assessing it was a Luxardo Probably. and she had no... That's a Randy Orton thing and, for sure. And she's like, there is no, like, there was no red to it. It wasn't a cherry cherry that you can buy for not $20 a jar. And I told her, yeah, that's a Luxardo. And she enjoyed the depth of flavor oh, in it. Oh yeah, it's so good. Now that that I can't take credit for that, that's all Randy Orton. He gets into that stuff, but yeah, I don't. There's not the like. Katie and I'll go and I'll order a cocktail. She'll order a cocktail. Uh, she's a big uh, Mule fan. She gets the Kentucky Mules. Really, Kentucky yeah, Mule. That's her favorite. We we actually acquired the brass cups for that, or copper cups, or whatever. Yep, copper are. cups. Just for her mules, we got I, ginger I, beer on hand all the time. I mean. Uh, Mosque, they're delightful. Yeah, we're just Refreshing. we don't we're not big vodka people in our house, but those Kentucky mules are good. But you keep you you keep it for other people. It's just mm-hmm. you, which is great because then it's like you never run out of it because then other right. people will come because vodka vodka you know. Well, I don't know if I have vodka. No, no I don't really? keep it for other people. Yeah, no. 
I wish I was that hospitable, but I'm not. We in our house we keep what we like or what we want to try. I wish I was the like my grandpa. He kept booze for all of his friends. That have to. You know what I'm saying? But I don't. I just have what we like. Cause like I, this is where like you you order to like the people that you're with. Me, I I would feel dis- disappointed in myself if somebody was like, oh, I was like, what can I make you? Uh, and I, I can make every like two drink or two ingredient cocktail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if somebody come, you know, uh, and was like, oh, I want a vodka cranberry. Yeah, so, yeah, that's speaking easy. of yeah, re- yeah. refreshing or something. Yeah, you know, always have cranberry juice. Always have vodka. Well, that's good. Yeah, we don't we don't have we don't operate that way. And I, you know, maybe we should. Maybe we should. Just like some silver wolf or some cartel. You would Just you them. would thrive. You would thrive in the travel baseball community. God, you'd be so good in that in that group. I thought about that, and that's not just the first time I had this thought. I thought about that when I went to Florida. That was the perfect environment for you. How so? It's just, um, it's parent social. Oh, I see what you're saying. And, yeah. and it's, it's like, um, you know, this is the first time where we have to put a certain amount of trust in our kids mm-hmm. to go off and do their own thing. Yeah. Away from home. Uh, and we're just like, as a group, we're like, okay, this is it. And then we go off and do our own thing. And, uh, boy, it would have been the perfect spot for you. There's a guy, there's a guy I met in, on my son's team. <laughs> Sorry, Stacey. His name is Wayne. Out, you know, out shot to Wayne. Wayne was the Matt of the group. He, he set the tone. You know, he kind of, he's a, he's a, he's a funny guy. And he, he kind of just, he keeps everybody going. He'll ask you, no, you, you, are you, you need another drink, whatever. Um, and he'll razz people. You know, the Bud Light thing was really popular at the yeah. time. We had one guy in the group who would like refuse to switch off Bud Light. And, you know, that became a thing. And then the tennis on the TVs was a thing. And, like, this was all Wayne. He was doing this the whole time. You can be more character driven in those situations because these aren't your normal hang, right. hang, hangs. Yeah, if you yeah. Will. yeah, yeah. You can kind of be somebody else or yeah. you can just be the, you know, just the. Uh, the catalyst for the fun. It's like the ty- Tyler Durden, you know, your single single serving friends. Yeah, like you and know, and aircraft. this Wayne Wayne had met the bartender at the hotel, who was the bartender who told me about the old fashions, and the so this guy had a New York accent. Yeah, in West Palm Beach, Florida, and he so Wayne was like, I gotta figure this guy out. What the fuck are you doing in West Palm Beach? Working at a hotel bar. Well, it turns out he was Trump's personal. Bartender, not personal because Trump doesn't drink, but like he was the bartender at Mar-a-Lago. And then like a series of, you know, just like career shifts or whatever got him to be like a hotel bartender. And so Wayne had concocted this story that this guy owned the hotel. <laughs> and he actually wasn't leaving. Just he like was a logic going up test. to the top floor. Yeah. And, it, and over the weekend it had evolved because this guy was bartending every single night. And it was just this awesome story. But all of the Mar-a-Lago stuff was true. So it's just playing on that one little fact. Just took this story because, and there was a Lamborghini parked in the parking lot. Because again, West Palm Beach is like for people who have millions and millions of dollars. We had actually, with our eyes, seen the lady who owned it walking in and out of that the Lamborghini. But still, it was that bartender's Lamborghini throughout the whole weekend, and it was like, you know, that was a map thing. It just reminded me of you. That was all. You would thrive in travel baseball. That's all I'm saying. So get your daughter into travel softball, th- th- you or know, travel th- swimming, th- or whatever. Things, yeah, things eventually that you know that may happen in the future. We'll see. It's as much for the parents as it is for the kids. Whale, whale tail. tail. What's whale tail? What is that? Um, instead of uh, what does that mean? The, the bikini line, mm-hmm. whale tail. Is that where you want? <laughs> is that what it is? It? I don't know. I don't know what it is. When you think of a whale tail, that's where. I thought maybe, you know, I had camel toe. Then there's, what's the other one? Moose knuckle. Moose knuckle, which yep. is a, I just, I laugh. Wait, whale tail is when you're. Whale tail. Tongue. Okay. Like you're thong. Yeah, yeah, you got a thong tan. Okay. This beer, and wow. I know, and I, I know. I learned that. I know uh, JT, get, JT gets down with the cream ales. Uh, I love cream ales. I can't, I can't get down with this. I can get down with the oh, 4%. Really? Uh, maybe it's just where I am in my place in life or whatever. I guess I just want a little bit more gimmickry or whatever. This this tastes so close to like German purity laws. And I like that 
you can't hide a bunch of stuff. There's not going to be, you know, obviously there should be a banana cream ale, but, um, you know, another place, another time. Uh, it's good. It just, this just isn't my thing. Um, I'm going to come off the top rope with a 3.0 on this. Okay. Fair enough. All right. You got that? Oh, yeah. There it is. The Canark Boner segment, everyone. Killer Whale Cream Hail. Let me get that in the screen there. Killer Whale Cream Hail. Canark Boner segment brought to you by Stev. Thanks, Stev. Thanks, What a guy. All right. Uh, first things first, before I get into the full can art, the side of this can has much different things than the side of this can, which is nothing. Almost. Can you carry it for a while? I'm going to go yeah. old school on this. Go ahead. I'm going to go pee. Go pee. Let's hear it. Yeah, All right. Please keep it. contents refrigerated. And that, there's a little icon for that. Please recycle. Little icon for that. Then... It has the bold new city of the South. This is obviously from Jacksonville. If I haven't said that, then shame on me. Uh, brewed and canned in Jacksonville, Florida, the bold new city of the South. I don't know if that's 100% true, but I will say that in the show, um, what is that show where everyone's dead? Uh, the Good Place. One of the characters is obsessed with the Jacksonville Jaguars and Blake Bortles, I think. Uh, and it's quite funny. Um, I wouldn't call it the bold new city of the South. I think if there was any bold new city of the South, it would probably be New Orleans because it was, um, had to be rebuilt after Hurricane Katrina. So, you know, like they call Chicago the second city. Exactly. <laughs> like they call Chicago the second city. It's, uh, not because it's second to any city. It's because it, the Chicago fire burned down the first one. The new city of New Orleans would have to be. The new city, right? And that's the bottom line. <laughs> yeah, goddamn right. Uh, and then there's also an icon for this can contains 12 fluid ounces X rad. I don't know what that means. I guess of or times rad. I don't know. Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, Mom, Duval. There's a whole bunch of stuff going Duval on. Duval is This down end by up Miami. and the fingers pointing towards the bottom. Duval's down by Duval, Florida is down by Miami. Okay. Well, this is from Jacksonville. I know that's where it's brewed, but... And now I went through Jacksonville on the way home. Because tripping, tripping Animals comes out of Duval. Oh, okay. Maybe this is a collaboration. No way. No fucking way. <laughs> no way. Um, no, it's not. It's not a collaboration. Now, when I, I went down, I went through Atlanta. Well, I went through Atlanta on the way home, too, I think. Did I? Uh, I can't remember. I was so tired. I did that. I pulled a mat, as I said before, and I just drove all the way through. Yeah. Um, now, I already have my score, so and I know what the flavors are, so I'm going to read this. About Killer Whale Cream Ale, if you are tied to lagers, give this egg, ale a shot. Our brew process allows for a crisp and refreshing ale with no bitter aftertaste. Come by the brewery sometime and ask Mom for the real story behind the name Kill Killer Whale. And then the actual can art here is a killer whale, which as we know is an orca. Uh, it is in a, uh, a circular uh, flotation, like a donut. What, is there a, a inner tube? Like, is there a f real name for that? Like an actual? Or yeah. Or just a donut? A tube. A tube. Um, and there's a buoy that says 12 fluid ounces. And the killer whale on his fin has a tattoo of a heart with an arrow through it. That says mom, you know, like the traditional mom yeah. tattoo. Um, in the background, there's Jacksonville skyline and there's some trees. Uh, and that's that's basically the can art uh, from the can art burner segment. I think it's decent can art. Killer whales have been in the news a lot lately because they're capsizing boats for having killed one of their own. Um I think orcas are amazing. I think they, um, we could learn, and we could teach them a lot. We could probably work together. You know, they could, they could work at the oceans. We could work the land, and together we can control the earth. That's what I think. We should team up. We should team up with the orcas. Do you do you think it's because uh, they they killed their own or killed one of their own or whatever? Is that why they're being because they're highly intelligent? Very you know, intelligent. They're, they're they're not the smooth brain. You know, they're that. not the smooth brain. They got tons of folds in their brain, and and the the um, the theory is is that one killer whale, one orca was um, was injured or killed by the propellers of a boat. 
And, you know, orcas travel in families, like pods, pods. I guess they call them. And so th there were witnesses to this. And highly intelligent animals who have memories and witness something, they're going to go back and tell their friends. But, I, but I've got something for you. Can I? Please. You're going to ask me a bunch of questions? Is that... Let's do it. Um, do you think it's out of spite? Do you think, you know, because there's a bunch of theories going on right now. Um, could they have imploded the submarine? Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting question. No. They couldn't? Okay. I think that <laughs> pressure did that. Mm -hmm. Pressure and stupidity. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forgot all about the submarine. That's how fast news travels in this in this world. Right. Man, that submarine right, was like the next headline news for a whole weekend. Fucking then, carbon but, fiber. Idiot. Oh. Yeah. I, I have the controller that they use. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't even use it to do my gaming. I, <laughs> I use it for my side arcade. So it's terrible. Um, but let's be honest here. The controller was not the problem. No. Yeah. The controller was the last of the problems. Yeah. Um, they found the controller, actually. Fully intact. The pressure of the ocean had not crushed it. <laughs> it was laying on the bottom of the ocean floor. So they found that. They found the controller. They found they found uh, some human remains. They found uh, the the capsule. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they don't report on that much. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I do, think that the orcas. Do you orcas... know the sound that a collapsing submarine makes? Let's hear it. Yeah, that's probably, or you know, underwater probably doesn't make a lot of sense. No, no, it's like space. But you know, if I'm gonna go out, um, a young man. Uh, as young as I can be. I was about to say that was five, that's six the years way, ago. That's the way I want to go. Yeah. Instantly. I don't want to know anything about my death. I don't want to have like long-term cancer or anything. You know? Neither, who does? Yeah. But if I'm it's old... Great. Way to make a stance. But if I don't want to have long-term cancer. Let's, let's right now make a stance against cancer. <laughs> yeah. Let's, right now. Let, you know, let, let's, let's bring <laughs> let's awareness to not wanting to die of cancer. Mm -hmm. let's, I think that's a good thing to bring hashtag. awareness to. People don't want to die of cancer. Yeah. And people need to know. We, we, uh, <laughs> hi, my name is Matt, and I refuse to I die refuse. of long-term cancer. You know what? If you refuse to do it, Magic Johnson refused to die of AIDS. Yeah. Did he, he had HIV. Well, he had HIV for a long time. I don't know if he's even at full-blown AIDS. Yeah, I don't think he is. Yeah. <clears throat> and now the guy's a billionaire. He owns part of the Dayton Dragons. You know, we like to hate on Magic Johnson in current day. I do not like to hate on him. But um, I re-watched, uh, I was actually watching um, a timeline documentary of the, I think it was the 80s. And it was the time that Magic Johnson talked to that little girl. You know, we've all seen the video of the girls crying. Um, that was totally like ad-libbed. Yeah. That wasn't planned. Anyway. When I talk for to him. little girls, it's ad libbed. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> uh, Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Please have a plan going in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think that the orcas are capsizing boats out of revenge. Okay. To answer your question. Yeah, we, got, <laughs> we got there. To answer your question, that's the Can't Have Boner segment brought to you by Chuggalo Stev. I think this beer is a uh, also a 4.0. It is a good cream ale, and I think that they are, what they failed to do here is is mention that there are other flavors than just cream ale because we've had several cream ales on this podcast, all of them tasting just like cream ale. This one I think does start to edge more towards like a vanilla cream ale or some sort of. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe lactose. Maybe they put lactose in this. Something that gives it a little extra boost. But it's not just strictly cream ale. I do like this beer. I think it's very good. One of the better cream ales that I've had. Considering they didn't put an extra flavor on here. I would say it's probably one of the best without... You know, because the Cali Creamin says it's vanilla. Yeah, once they say... Once they once you said lager, I totally get lager. Yeah, yeah, I get that too. Like sad... I need a sad one. I'd be right oh, there. yeah, we need a sad one. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Price is right. Is that what that's from? Yeah, oh, you're right. Price is right music. Price is right. I'm writing it down. That's going to be on there very soon. Sweet. You got to get the Yodel guy, too. Then, you know, if you're going to go Price is right, you got to get them all. I love um, the Yodel game. Whoops. You're not supposed to make sounds. That's why these carpets are here. I know. You, you're, and you're super aggressive when you slam them. I love to aggressively <laughs> make noises on this carpet. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's Bold City. Bold City. 
Yeah. Old city. Don't think I'm going to remember it in a couple of months. I don't think I will either. When I think back to... Energy that City, Florida that's beer? another one. Energy, Energy City, city was, yeah. Energy City. Speaking of the city beers. Cigar City. Cigar City, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. Are, are all three of those? Those are all Florida. Yeah. Is it's been a while city, since we've Florida? had Energy City. Yeah, it's been a long time. But that is a um, barrel house um, yeah, those come in tall acquisition. Boys. Yeah, they yeah. do. They do get them there. Uh, and speaking of Barrel House, we're going to be doing our uh, another out shout. Another out shout to the Barrel House. We're going to be doing our Advent calendar on Veterans Day. Veterans Day. So it's the tenth of November this year. Please get back to us. Um, there's a couple of people um, that have already gotten back to both of us. So we're starting to get those numbers. Ooh. I'm hoping, hoping to have those numbers by mid August. To, uh, well, you can put, put me down for two again. We'll we'll, uh, we'll put you down for two. Yep, myself and and Phil. Um, okay, so that's Phil's number. Um, so then, right now, officially, we're up to eight. We're up to eight. We we and he, he we want full participation in the advent calendar, but we really want full participation on the advent calendar day. Yep, that is we start a magical early. day, and we do start early and in seven o'clock. We, we have been ending more towards lunchtime, but I feel like we're going to start edging up, you know, more towards the post lunchtime um, as this carries on. It's just going to go longer and longer. Because we departed there uh, quarter to two. Cause quarter I was, to two. I was home quarter after two. After oh, that's good. So we, we went, uh, apparently there, there was an Italian beef place nearby and that Italian beef fucking was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was cold. Oh. And that's how they serve it. And I was not aware of that. Yeah, that's where a sad, sad button. We okay. need a sad button. We'll, we need a sad button. We All right. Real Italian beef. So get us those numbers. We'll get put comments numbers. down below. Uh, the Cubs Brewers is on, so we're going to end so we can uh, watch a little bit that's of that. That's right. Cubs Brewers today, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I forgot all about any, that. Uh, any, about any last thoughts? I've already, I've already got the episode title. Yeah, there's It's going to be from you. I don't know. It's already quoted. All right. Uh, any last thoughts? Um, no. Happy 4th. To everyone. Yep. America. And the happy birthday to this guy. Birthday. Uh, thanks. Your birthday and the 4th synonymous. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, mean, I was actually... I big, should have been born on the 4th. Uh, you know, you celebrate one, you celebrate the other. That's pretty much how it goes. All the fireworks should just have my name on them. Yep. It that, should just be called JT that's, Works. That's great. So, like, when I have to drug up my dog because of the fireworks, I blame you. <laughs> blame Go JT. Ahead. Go ahead. We can blame my parents. It wasn't, you know... Chuggalo mom. Chuggalo mom. She shouldn't have had me so close to 4th of July. Ruining things. Whatever happened, was it three months later? Yeah, every time it out, what happened like late September, early October? Was that someone's birthday? Your mom or your dad's birthday? Uh, no. Yeah. What did happen? Oh, maybe anniversary. Yep. Maybe I anniversary. I was my father's birthday. For oh, sure. were you? Oh, for, yeah. Sure. Yeah, for sure. 100 I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. I wouldn't know. Think, things you should dwell on. Yeah, yeah. Things you. I, I wonder. What, you know, what, what, what what event? How does conception you're, you're, work? Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, I we know we p- pretty much know my oldest son. You know, because I was in the military. There's there's not a lot of opportunity in there. Yeah. So, it can only be like one. You got one week of time. You got. <laughs> gotta get it in. <laughs> gotta get it in while the getting's good. That's what they say. Take us home, JT. Hey, that's uh, that's episode two hundred thirty-seven. And that's it. Thanks for joining us.